Okay, so we're talking about um, gaming today. Oh, I think this is, uh, here, let me, bear with me here. Patrick uh, needs the link to the Zoom room, so let me provide this to him. It's, um... I got it. I just got to send it to him. Okay, so hopefully he'll join us here in a minute. Um, so we're talking about gaming and on Tuesday, oh, there we go. Let's, let's let Patrick's audio connect here. Hey, Patrick. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Boy, and if we could get Raphael, uh, it, what was the status of Raphael? Um, was he not able to join us or um, let, let me, let me just send him a message real quick. Okay, so um, so we were having a, a good discussion on Tuesday uh, with so with the advent of Raphael's ERC eleven fifty five manager. You know that's another piece that we need from the original idea of you know in the gaming world. Uh, being able to create these assets, digital assets, you know, swords and shields and uh, so forth that uh, developers can create and sell to gamers that they can use in, in the gaming world. So, uh, and then and also in the metaverse, going from game to game and so forth. So that was kind of the, the, the goal or the idea that we were working towards getting to. So, you know, uh, so it's, um, with with the uh, ERC eleven fifty five manager is you know how how is that going to fit in and how how we're able to move this a uh, bigger effort forward is kind of what what the discussion I wanted to have to kind of work out the pieces so that you know because uh, we we've, we've got a good idea but moving it from idea into in, into something more tangible yeah i th think uh, uh one of the things we want to do is prototype right we want to hmm. say okay we we looked at the contracts last week we looked at what was available so now let's create a uh uh, let's create an asset, uh, you know, a, a token on um, testnet uh, uh, using um, the uh, 1155. Okay. Um, so uh, uh, I guess that's. Uh, we should probably, I mean, it's writing some rolling, right? So uh, that should, we should have some, a live coding session that creates the token. Okay. Okay, so, and, and that's something that we can work on now. So, you know, so a, a this digital asset prototype. So, you know, we want to create, you know, a, a, um, a, a shield and, uh, uh, and so, so Jim, you're, you're talking about the smart contract that we're okay that we would create, and and that would be follow the the the, the ERC 1155 protocol, as I understand it. So, 
Um, so well, is, is that they, the flow? The, the capabilities that he provides, uh, you know, include everything we need to create a token. Right, to create uh, any kind of token we want. Well, uh, I have to look back at it. <laughs> Should be prepared, but I'm not prepared. So, okay. So, oh, okay, so this digital asset that we're creating, uh, is it a, a an, so when we, I, you described it as a token. Uh, it, now, is this different, this, so we, this shield that we're creating um, as a digital asset, d so it, it, it'll be a, a, a token, is, so is that the idea? So I guess it would be. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. So let me move. So I was kind of putting together um, a roadmap. Uh, and, and, uh, you know, at the same time, we need to create a token that's going to represent that we're going to use to pay ourselves. The right. So the that's token. Yeah, so that's the community coin component right. of it. So these are two things that we can actually be working on, and we're not dependent on uh, necessarily on the um, our chain platform. So because uh, uh, you know there's there's still you know development going on there as far as uh, and everyone can see my screen, correct? You guys see my screen? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So you know some of the the the, the big uh, development uh, going on on the Archain platform is last finalized state, uh, and then the tri merge. And and with those, that's going to give us the performance that we need in order to begin working on the the backing contracts for sharding. So ultimately, you know this this gaming. The gaming planet that we're creating is going to be have its own own shard. Um, so so it's it's like okay, we know that you know the these performance features are uh, in the works; they're coming along with the uh, bless you uh, the 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 backing um, sharding contracts. But in the meantime, so we've got the, the digital asset prototype and the community coin uh, that we can work on. And now in preparation for for those things coming okay yeah, there's no reason we can't use the test net chart use I the test net for <laughs> okay 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 so um that was helpful and then how so say we okay so we create a, a prototype uh we got a digital asset prototype and we've got a, a community coin what how does uh, Raphael's 1155 um, ERC1155 manager fit in to this? What 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 is have with that existing? What what can we do with that now that we weren't able to do before? Does anyone understand understand it? Or it maybe should, that's it should it, be able uh, to manage all the tokens that fit fit into the starter. Like if one token uses a different standard, standard uh, this manager shouldn't be able to uh, trade. I love for those tokens to trade basically. So only tokens that kind of follow this uh, standard should be allowed on this platform. That's oh, I okay, I got it. So it's it's kind of like um, um, it, it, it it's kind of creating this. It, uh, selectivity as far as okay um, uh, yeah er, er, long you can c come into this and I'm using this gaming planet uh, as as for a lack of a better term for what you know our effort is here you know we're kind of in our own little world uh, so if we're in our own little world uh, you know we're part of collab but in our own little worlds we're on our own planet so we're the, the gaming planet um, Orbiting around uh, our chain, so so um, we've so, so we've got developers developing uh, digital assets, 
and and, and as they build these digital assets, we say, okay, you got to build them by this ERC-1155 protocol. So they're building, building in, you know, some of them follow it, some of them don't, some of them trying to follow it, they got mistakes. But uh, it's the, 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 the ERC-1155 manager, they have to be able to put it into there. And that's sort of that, the, the verification that the, you, you, you did what we said you were supposed to do. You followed the instructions, you, you followed the, the, the protocol. So, and if, you know, they, so everyone who said that they would uh, goes in there and if they, they were said that they would and they somehow messed it up, this would kind of point out, say, okay, well, you tried to do it, but you know, you didn't do it right. So you got to go back and fix it. And then you can go back into the manager. So now I understand how that piece of it fits into what, what we're trying to do here. Okay. It's like with, with all the ERC token standards, like if your token doesn't have like a transfer function, it's not, it's not an ERC20 token. I'm going to steal the uh, screen here. Yeah, I'll stop sharing. Okay. I, I made so the good thing. I, I, I turned on the ability for anyone to take over the screen share. And okay. <laughs> Just uh, for your information. Uh, but this is the basically the capabilities that we have. Um, uh, the uh, create token. Uh, uh, I guess a lock capability, a purchase token, read. Uh, Does it have anything to do with transfers uh, and stuff? I don't, yeah, I thought he, I, his demo already included that. I thought to do. I don't know if this is up, read me is up to date, but maybe it is. Oh yeah, it has transfer function. Yeah, it should. And when you say transfer function, is that going from game to game or where, what's, what, what exactly is, being what's the uh go, transferring from where to where uh to a different process i suppose or a... to oh maybe to a different to a different owner yeah from one owner to another okay the, okay the 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 exchange of ownership maybe that's it okay so that's that was helpful, and and that kind of speaks to what we've been discussing in the in our blockchain art on Tuesday's discussion, where you know there you have a a, a digital piece of art, and the whole the the whole thing is you know you're an artist, you create a digital piece of art, and you want to sell it to someone. So now you're transferring the ownership from the artist to the 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 new owner, the first owner, and. Well, it looks like he has purchase token here, um, but he doesn't. But transfer is, is to still you know. Yeah. Uh, now, now I see that transfer is only used when you purchase, so it's well, not yeah, like a purchase, a purchase is basically the same thing, right? <laughs> Except uh, that you're uh, you're. you're uh, Sending, uh, in a way, yes. In other words, when you purchase it, it, it has to get transferred to you. <laughs> so in essence, you already have that functionality, sure. Oh, so okay. So when you when you create it, it it's it's getting okay. The initial transfer is to the person who creates it. Is that what you're saying, Jim? Well, yeah, the initial was uh, we create, uh, that's uh, part of it, yeah. Okay, create token, create token. I, I, I own it, then if somebody else purchases it, then they own it. Right, right, and that's that's the, the transfer, transfer of, of the right. token. Yeah. Was, yeah. But you trying, can't uh, seem to transfer directly, so call the transfer. Uh, it's into the list. Yeah, well, it's you know maybe it's not one hundred percent functional. Maybe we have to finish help finish it. <laughs> yeah. So well, we can we can talk to, to Raphael to see right. what 
Well, what, any, what the, anybody did you can do make that? a pull, anyone can make a pull request here. Okay. Right. So we can we can change it now if you want. <laughs> uh, okay. So uh, 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 so we basically have the the community token, which I, this supports fine. I guess. I don't see any reason why we just couldn't. Uh, you know, we can create, uh, you know, uh, one of a kind or any number of tokens we want, right, of the same kind. Uh, of uh, you're speaking to the the digital asset that's going to be created, as as opposed to creating just one of that digital asset or. 10 of them is that what you're referring to right you know do we i, I guess I, i'm not sure how we uh, when we you know well we well and it says at any time the owner can create some more tokens see so create tokens right. and the the idea but basically is that if as long as your token supports the uh, 1155 RFC uh, uh, 1155 protocol, that they can be in a market together. We can exchange them in the same market. Right. That that that's where that transferability is gets facilitated. Anything that's following that that protocol, the 1155 protocol. Hey, everything matches, and it's just it's a, it's an easy transfer. So, um, uh, so, uh, so you, we're creating a shield, okay? It's one of our tokens. Yeah. Okay, and the other another that's a like a singleton thing. And the other right. we're, then we're creating a community token, which is, you know, we can create a billion of them, or we, we have to decide how many to make. Yeah. So, in, 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 you know, uh, so there, that's, I think, so two separate efforts. One is, you know, the discussion around creating the digital assets uh, and with the ERC 1155. And the other is, okay, well, once we get that figured, at, figured out, and then we want to start uh, advertising or promoting that we have something um, that we want other developers that we, we want we want de other developers to, to to join the effort to start creating these digital assets. Then maybe that's the time to have the, the discussion of creating the community token in order to you know do this uh, bartering of of tokens for service. But I. My thought is, if if we try to do both of those at the same time, it, it it's it's going to um, um, make make things more challenging. I I my thought is, if we just focus on just cr the the digital asset token right now, you know, be able to if we can say we can do something and and do something well, I would say let's create the digital asset token, and demonstrate that we can transfer ownership of that and then if we can do that and and replicate it then we've got something that that we want others to help us then we can start building inventory start building inventories of digital assets and then that speaks to more the community effort of having uh getting people more more people involved creating digital assets which now start to get you know, uh, bought and sold. So, so my thought is, Jim, with the the blockchain on the art, you've been working on the blockchain art smart contract. Um, so, if we didn't if, didn't get didn't do much there. <laughs> okay, well, um, I think what I think being able to the leverage, it, it, I think, is essentially the same. The same idea, whether it's um, fine art for uh, for 
if for art lovers or for gamers, it's a digital asset. And that digital asset has to follow the, you know, be built and follow the rule, the rules that we're creating. Right. That's, and, and, and that's what this, that's what this, uh, 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 we look at the, um, uh, create, the, token, create token dot row. Right. So, and we so, can see, we can see that, you know, that we, uh, have a create, uh, token. Uh, we have a signature, we have a nonce, uh, we have a uh, price. Um, and that, uh, yeah, that small contract for digital art, is it like, does it have uh, like royalties functionality and stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, so that is, so let me let me just jump in here so in the in the the uh, digital art world is so if i'm the artist you know i create some art i sell it to someone you know i'm going to get a hundred percent of uh of the profit now uh, and, and i say i sell it to jim and now jim decides he he has you know this piece of art and he wants to sell it to patrick well when he sells it to patrick uh, for, you know, it, and it, it appreciates by $100. Um, Jim's going to get $85. But me as the developer or as the artist, you know, part of the smart contract is I'm going to get 15% royalties on the increase in price. So I'm going to get 15% of, uh, of, of the appreciated value. So that's in the art world. So in the right. gaming world for the developers, so th this is a question for Theo, is something like that, is, is that a, a, um, uh, a feature that would have uh, value to developers that they get uh, royalties for every time their digital assets gets resold in, in, in the marketplace? Or is that, is that not something yeah, that Yeah, definitely, happens? from both. Okay. Uh, like probably from both developer like art developer perspective and player perspective like if a player gets uh, like unboxes some uh, I don't know, or finds some <coughs> rare item maybe he doesn't want to lose it completely and sell it maybe he just wants to like borrow it to someone right and get uh, uh, like money money in return for it like okay that could be possible so yeah like some sort of royalty so that also person uses it and he gets something in return exactly so, so like those, borrowing your assets is something that could be possible with this yeah and and in the, in the art world that, that component is referred to as um uh being a, a gallering uh for the galleries or uh for exhibitioning exhibition so when you uh when an artist exhibitions their art in a gallery you know you know for you know three months so it's in a gallery and they're they're loaning their art to the gallery to be on displayed so they're they're getting compensated for the loaning of that art to the gallery so that would be similar to in the gaming world a gamer, he has his, you know, his bag of of uh, swords and shields of of assets, and he he's he he can loan them out to another gamer for a period of you know three weeks, and in doing so, you know, he's going to get compensated for, for loaning those out, and then after the three weeks, it reverts back to back to that the original gamer. So th yeah, th exactly. Like there, a, a safe transfer because this current yeah. system is not possible. Like you, for example, unbox some rare item, right? And you own it. If you want to borrow it to someone, mm -hmm. you have to trade with that person and that person can just keep it. So the uh, problem, so that kind of solves this problem. So, right. So the problems that we're uh, trying to solve, they're both, they, they both exist both in the gaming world and in the art world. So we're, we're that's, that's kind of a, a um, a, a nice situation to be in that we're solving problems in, in both domains. The, the both domains have the same, same issues. So we, we're, we'll be able to lever, what it, 
with the smart contracts that we create and, and, and the efforts that w what we build out, you know, we'll be able to leverage them uh, in, in both, both of these domains, both of these worlds. So, I think, um, I think you know, to some extent, you know, like I said, it's just an interface. So we're just modifying this to be the way it works. We want it to work. Th that's that's what I'm. I think we're we're looking at we're looking at the smart contract right now. Right. So, and we, and we, we for any particular token, we may want to change. The yeah. So part of, part of it, of, like, uh, to, how do we? Uh, I mean, some of these are very basic. They're going to stay the same. So, so as, as I'm seeing it, maybe, you know, and Raphael's create, you know, he's created these, this template. Okay, so, for purchase token. We can make right. it do anything we want. Make it. We can change it. Yeah. We have total yeah. freedom in what it does, you know, how we do a purchase. This is just an example, really. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Good. So maybe also I forgot to mention uh, from a developer perspective. You know how the the game developers like purchase assets to use in their games, and uh, they have like certain right, rights to it. And obviously, the creator of those assets doesn't want them to be resold. That's like the restriction. But what okay. if you bought a bunch bunch of assets, but you still maybe want to be able to sell them or like. I don't know, maybe you don't need need them anymore. Maybe someone else does. So some sort of right transfer should be like part of this. Uh, and the uh, like ability to just sell this uh, item further to someone else mm -hmm. and still give the money to the creator, it's kind of essential. Otherwise, uh, people like purchasing the same items and maybe like only one of them misusing it, I don't know. So but, I mean, so, the more yeah. the more money for creators, the better, obviously. But it maybe should be more efficient. You know. Well, and I think as we get a better understanding of of what you can do and cannot do with the 1155 standard. So my understanding is, so Engine Coin they they put a lot of time and effort into creating this this standard, this protocol, 1155. You know, there's well, and, and it's from the, the gamer's perspective. So I think if, if the, the more we can understand what that protocol is, and then with Raphael, so Raphael's created a, a template, a Rolang template, where now it, it's just kind of uh, just plugging in values in, into the template. But we have to know what it is we're plugging in and where and, and what the impact is. So we've got the uh, the, the 1155 protocol, as it, as, it, as, it, as it's explained by Ethereum, you know, understanding that Raphael's template, right? And then we're copying that and we're creating our, our own, you know, that first digital asset of that, you know, that, that shield. And um, so, so that's, that's how I see, you know, uh, understanding this, you know, this, this, this progression of, of, and that, of what we need to understand in order to get to, you know, you know, getting that first digital asset created. Well, so the first thing to understand about ERC-1155 is it's not a token, it is a smart contract that you send calls to that allows you to mint tokens with all kinds of different properties. So it's, it, hello? Yeah, I hear, we hear you. J yeah. So, so, it's, so, so it, did it, Ra Raphael when so when Raphael is creating his ERC eleven fifty five manager, um, I, I so I, I I'm assuming that he you know followed the 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 protocol as as a guide. So, are we able to follow use the manager? I guess that's the question is. How were you able to use the, the, the will, by manager he created? It will be a lot easier to use the manager uh, using Dappy than it will be, and than it will be to use the whole Kludgy engine developer system, which needs GraphQL to work. 
Um, and all, yeah, all you need to do is shove a smart contract onto the R chain blockchain and probably test net, shove the, ER, shove the ERC1155 thing that uh, Raphael's written, deploy it to test net, test it out, make some things, see what breaks. Um, and, and because it's Rolang and it's kind of safer and easier to use, um, we could make our own. Like we're not stuck with ERC-1155. That's the starting point. But we oh. can actually... It should, it, it should be ERC-1155 compatible, probably. Yeah, it's not, it's, it, that's not... Uh, I think there's no reason not to make it ERC-1155 uh, compatible. It, it, that's just an interface to it. Well, it's, yeah. it's a, how, how it's built is independent of the interface. The first smart contract, we can focus on getting ERC-1155 right. So it's compatible and then yeah. um, maybe that attracts projects built on that smart contract contracting right. platform. What, what we'll do is, you know, we'll, co we'll, co we'll copy the ERC-1155 contract that mm -hmm. uh, is there now. We'll copy it. We'll rename it to be shield. Okay, and then we'll define the properties of a shield. Okay, no, in the country, you know, uh, uh, ERC1155 makes items. It's not an item, it's the minting factory that makes the items with the different properties. Well, I, I say the contract is what does it. We don't want to have any restriction on behaviors. And so therefore, we, uh, the language of the contract should be totally uh, free and unconstrained. Um, uh, why, why would we, uh, uh, you're talking about writing a very generalized system. Well, all we have is a prototype of one compatible ERC 1155 thing. We don't have a general factory. Yes, it's a factory in the sense that in as far as the capabilities of this particular mm -hmm. uh, object that he's creating, it's just one kind of object. Um, you can create it with different properties. Okay, so there's a, there's a, a tool so that you can, uh, uh, we can make different kinds of, uh, we, uh, we can, let's see, where, where's, the, where's the manager? Uh, you have a link for the manager? <laughs> Way on uh, I see it here. Uh, that's part of, okay, that's was the manager was in Dappy. It's in Dappy, right. It's in Dappy, right. That's, you said that already, okay. Um, But uh, in a sense, you know, uh, we really don't need a manager because we can, uh, uh, where was it? Now I forget where I was. Um, the, uh, the existing contracts allow us to create tokens of an asset and uh, it has a, a uh, uh, it allows us to put in metadata okay into it um, what is it called Okay, he has a payload here. Okay, uh, where is it? That's a payload. Okay, um, he defines the uh, 
a token, some token structure here that's really the comments. But then he has a create token. Let me, I can just let me find, you will find here. Create token channel, whatever. Let's go look at that. Okay, now we can uh, create any kind of properties we want here. And in the payload, we can put any data we want. We don't, even if, you know, we, we can make, the, com make, the, make the, the objects as complex as we want. You know, we can have, you know, Dark, you know, uh, uh, zero uh, knowledge uh, proofs and other over other uh, other data, any kind of JSON data, and we, you know, it just gets accessed as a payload, and we pick out strings from it as a map. Um, but we have create token, we have purchase token. Right. Okay. So, so uh, we can we can specify the rules here. What you know how 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 a thing gets purchased. Right. Uh, so we can you know if the creator gets a kickback or whatever. Uh, we can always uh, we pay something back to the previous owner. I don't know. So I'm trying to understand uh, Patrick's comments or concerns with the uh, Raphael's ERC 1155 manager. So uh, how how give me I what think you, yeah we I'm, we copy what ERC 1155 has done already and work on doing our homework and having a common understanding of what it does because I'm not sure because I've worked with it. And Theo's worked with it, so okay. understand what's good and bad about it quite deeply. Um, but it's not—it's not all singing, all dancing, and it's not perfect. Okay. So, um, but let's work on copying it. But I think one of our chain strengths is we can actually iterate it and do a two, a one point one, a one point two, a two point zero, a three point zero. Um, and actually have our own gaming token standard over time that is okay. super, superior. And that's kind of why I'm, just what I was saying. Oh, uh, okay. Well, so if, if we were, so, because, you know, I'm trying to leverage what Raphael has done. So if he's created this 1155 manager, created these, this template that we can follow that's written in, in, in Rolang. So if we take that and, and, you know, copy that and then populate it with, with the uh, the details and the you know the payload as Jim talked about. Now we we've, we've created something. You know, we've created a thing. It's not perfect. You know, there's lots of improvement, but it it now it's something. And you know, we 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 can identify that we can create multiples of that. But then now the improvement process goes in. So. Now 11.55 becomes, we, we enhance it. Now it becomes our own protocol. It becomes the, 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 the 333 protocol, and it's an improvement over the 11.55. And uh, now, now and, and that, that, that is the one, the 11.33 is the one that we, uh, or 3.33, whatever number I used, that, that has become... The, the preferred protocol to use. So is that kind of the, the pathway that we're thinking about? Uh, Definitely what I'm thinking, because um, yeah, the, one of the main benefits of our chain is um, I think faster iteration and like uh, greater experimentation because you don't need as much of a quality assurance cycle to deploy smart contracts. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm definitely, 
I, I think the bigger, the, the first hurdle is just getting your C1155 working, but the, yeah. the, the commercial opportunity is saying ours is twice as good. Okay. Well, in, in that, what you just said is something that I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. The agreement on is get something <laughs> working, you know, just use uh, 1155, you know, with all its imperfections and with its flaws, but use that for now. And we get something working to say, okay, we, 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 we can check off that box. So, so perhaps we, that, that is over the next you know, uh, so going in you know, the next week or two or however long it takes, we get a well, better. You got something working. And I think you can make calls to the, I think he's deployed the smart contract and you can make calls to it via DAPI to like mint, mint tokens and things. That looked like what he was showing us uh, on Tuesday, but it's sort of how we get. Cause, and you see, this is starts to be the problem with the RC1155. Patrick, I think. Hello? Yeah, now you cut out there for a moment. Okay, yeah, sorry, the weather's not good here at all, so it might be because okay. of the storm. Um, you start to, you, you, it's quite easy to get it working, but the problem with ERC-1155 is that there's a load of middleware cludge on top of it, like okay. just normal like web 2.0 type stuff um, in between. So it, um, and Raf, and Engine have a team of 60 devs to build out their full platform. And we have two. So I, I, there's a question mark for me over whether our team should be devoting like a lot of resources to get us from a proven prototype to a spit polished and cleaned thing that Engine have or whether okay, we, we've checked off that prototype. We've demonstrated, we, we can prove that it works and could be a business model on our chain. And maybe actually we prototype something else rather than, because it might just become a Pareto inefficient thing if we're do, putting people like uh, Mycroft and Theo on doing like front-end development work when they really should be doing core like our chain -y stuff. Okay. Well, th these are good topics of discussions to have as, as far as uh, how, how to allocate resources, you know, and when. So maybe at this point in time, uh, there, those dev resources are, are better served elsewhere. And then maybe with this gaming effort, you know, maybe I, I revisit it a month from now. I can't get Theo working on CubeSpawn Maker which is like the only actual game being built on Archie. You know? So if he doesn't have time... I mean, we need the token for like ERC-1155 to like make it work actually, like because of the idea to make it produce items. Yeah, well, we, we only have like very, very simple items and we don't have many of them. So I don't see it being like a big issue hashing something together in DAPI that's good enough to get a prototype out. Um, and maybe that, but that, um, yeah, anyway, I, I just think we're very shorthanded and like, you know, even, even doing like 5% of what Engine have done just for CubeSpawn Maker in terms of proving the ERC-1155 is, um, you might struggle to pay for that at the moment. Okay. Well, well maybe given the, the sort of the nature of the conversation, perhaps we, we, we have kind of, a, I, at least for me, I have a better understanding of what the pieces are. So here we are, uh, we're coming up on May 1st. So maybe June 1st, we have the same conversation and see where we're at because there's a, a lot's going to happen in a month's time. So, mm -hmm. so what, what, how, how do we feel about that? Let's table this conversation for 30 days, then we'll come back June 1st or, you know, on Tuesday or on a Thursday uh, and, and pick up where we left off. Does, does that sound reasonable? That sounds very reasonable. If we're talking about exchange listings and investor conversations. And there's, 
because there's oh. a lot of lot of things going on and and you know things are picking up momentum now so a lot may happen in 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 30 days so okay oh. how, how does everyone feel about that i i think it's good until we get a, a better sense check on what resources might be available to attack this problem like yeah because last thing we wanted to do is get frustrated and uh feel like we're putting a lot of effort into something that's not getting a lot of getting the return back so uh I, we certainly want to avoid you know getting ourselves into that situation so okay well good i, I mean that's that's i'm glad we had this uh get together so why don't we do this we'll we'll, we'll reconvene back on uh tuesday at our normal dappy Developer session. I was uh, I was on mute there. Yeah, Dappy is a could be a, a little bit of a challenge. I mean, to some extent, uh, you know. I, yeah, I want to get that. I guess I got to get that reloaded and figured out because I, the installation I have doesn't work on Windows. But uh, uh, you know, the other thing I was thinking, you know, for. for we have a with the 1155 we have an api which allows us to create tokens and things you know yeah. we can just paste code into the custom window here and and, and deploy it on testnet uh, we don't really need anything else in order to uh, uh, right and that's for the community token which is i want to kind of separate the two out because that's that's a separate conversation I didn't want to. I don't want to uh, conflate the two. I mean, we we could create a shield in this interface without a problem, right? We could just paste it in there this, the code to create a shield, and we could start experimenting with it. Okay. Well, why don't we why don't we revisit that on on Tuesday um, and start taking a peek under the hood. And, and and exploring what we can and cannot do. You just want to call create token, you know, <laughs> with yeah. the properties, with the, you know, have you know, with the properties we want. Yeah, and whether it's you know a, a shield or you know a piece of uh, artwork or whatever, you know, it th that that still has still has value. So and we're, we're you know, we have to see if the sure. contracts, if we can use the contracts that they've deployed as is, then we will. Uh, if we can't, then we have to modify. We can get, we're going to have okay. custom tokens. All right. We're going to force. I, I guess I can look into the ESC 1155 standard because even if I work for Engine for like a couple of months, I only work with like GraphQL with their trusted platform. I n yeah. never saw the ESC 1155 yeah. contract itself. I don't think anyone has. Uh, yeah. Uh, so. Okay. I'm gonna go through this uh, Ethereum EIP and kind of see what Rafael did and what kind of is required to make it fully compatible with the CRC 1155. Okay. And well, actually put it on uh, what's what's it called now? Rips? No, <laughs> not Rips. Uh, for Airchain, Airchain improvement proposals. Oh yeah, the uh, uh, our chips. Our chip. Yeah, basically converted to Archie. Probably not as detailed as this one, but ah, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, maybe something similar. So they have the same stand standard, first maybe a bit simplified as okay. opposed to requirements. So I, I get a sense there's still some just uh, backroom discussions that we can have instead of a, you know, a, a big effort working towards creating something continue to try to understand what it is we're looking at get you know with jim's comment of looking at the 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 1155 creating the shield understanding what that is and then you know with uh with theo's part of um you know creating a, our own standard through the r chip process and that's you know and that's uh you know as at some point in time that's certainly something that we would want to do as well so so yeah i think maybe we can still have those types of discussions just to expand our understanding of what it is we're looking at and what it is we're trying to do yeah i think uh, okay good you know 
know, there's always a million details that aren't aren't yeah. covered in, covered in the standards, and we could at least need to have our best practices there in terms of how we're, we've extended the standards. Okay, understood. So we're, yeah, and I'm all for you know g getting a better understanding of what it is we're looking at because you know I, uh, I you know I don't know enough uh, enough about this topic. So yeah. ERC one one five five docs for like developers using it. That would be the best place. That's a great place to start. Oh, okay. Developers building on this stuff. So, and uh, there's like a GraphQL interface, and from reading that, you could get an understanding of how you mint your own items, doing it, like the difference between fungible, non-fungible tokens, transfer fees. Um, locking to wallets it explains a whole bunch of stuff okay yeah i'll take a look at that and start to familiarize myself with the uh, erc 1155 docs so cool refql interface is an interesting thing i mean we can certainly um, easily uh, uh, uh basically even we could almost edit the graphql into into Rolang with you know very simply. <laughs> mm -hmm. And when I was actually writing these GraphQL calls, that's what like Rolang started to make sense at that point. Yeah. Because it was actually they had they took the the solidity and actually compiled it and made the interface language something much more similar to Rolang. To work, and then it's like, oh, okay, so why, you know, then all of everything Greg was said, I started to get like a massive download. It all started yeah. to make sense in my brain. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, you know, when I learned, you know, I first learned GraphQL, you know, I was thinking this, you know, how close, you know, how, uh, how it almost was Rolang syntax already. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no, not really. But, but it's it's in the direction. Yeah. It, it it looks like it could be a a, a second cousin of Rolang. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, like more. Well, it, more it, doesn't really, it doesn't really have the basic par operator, but it had you know. You know, it's uh, uh, you know what we end up with is essentially GraphQL in par with other GraphQL. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, we're at the top of the hour. I didn't want to take too much of our time uh, on this, but I think we uh, are at a good stopping point. So uh, thank you, everybody. So uh, I'll see everybody um, uh, on Tuesday, if not sooner. Okay. See you, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks.